Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Tonight I'm going to show the processing workflow that I used on my latest target, the uh, Sliced Onion Galaxy. Now this galaxy isn't uh, imaged very often. Uh, there's a few images of it out there, but you don't see it making the uh, rounds every galaxy season up here in the northern hemisphere. And so I think most people are just unaware of this particular galaxy. Now it sits just above Leo. And there it is. All right, so NGC 3344. And it's a really awesome looking spiral galaxy. Now, the one thing that could be a bit challenging on this one is that there's no dense star field here. So at longer focal lengths, you might be challenged with uh, finding a good guide star, but I was able to do it this year uh, with my relatively small um, ZWO off-axis guider. So it's got the tiny prism. I think it's like seven or eight millimeters, something like that. Uh, but I was able to get one. I shot it using my Celestron Edge 8-inch uh, with the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. All right, so let's uh, hop into uh, Picks and Sight. All right, so here we go. Now, you see three different shots here. Basically, I collected about three different sessions worth of data. Uh, the total integration time for all three of these is uh, a hair over 24 hours. Basically, the way, the way I captured the data on this one is that I started pretty early. Uh, so while imaging other targets as those targets set, I would slew over uh, to this galaxy and maybe grab an hour or two before sunrise uh, for several nights. And uh, the weather in this time of year as we moved into spring uh, is very unstable. So, you know, I had to take, I had to get the data when I could. Now, after this second batch of data, I actually had to take apart the imaging train on my scope because I decided to take it to a star party. Uh, I really need to get a dedicated visual uh, astronomy telescope for the star parties because I, I do not like taking apart the uh, imaging train. Uh, but I got it back uh, together. We had a, a couple more nights of uh, clear skies and I managed to get several more hours. Uh, and then, then I called it quit and decided to process it. So what you're seeing here is the three different sets. And then I used the... Um, uh, I had to register each of these to each other, and then I just simply used the manual uh, uh, image integration tool in Pix and Sight and just stacked these three stacked images for the final image. Uh, so let's take a look here, and here is our integration uh, of the three. It's not the cleanest. I got all this kind of moted noise background in here, but uh, the galaxy showed some potential. And I have to say, overall, the processing on this was really pretty easy. I mean, uh, if you're uh, familiar, if you're one of my regulars, uh, you know I have all kinds of stuff over here, different masks and everything. Uh, but you can see this is pretty much all I had to work with. Uh, so I made a clone, and uh, I did, actually, hold on, I think I'm getting ahead here. Yeah, all right, so this is uh, the stack of the three sub-stacks, I'm going to call it. Uh, this here is using the gradient correction tool, this new tool in uh, Pix and Sight. It works really well, especially on these galaxy shots. Um, I'm in a Bortle 5 and I mean you can you can see the light pollution gradients here. It's pretty interesting. Most of this data was collected after the Meridian flip and these were this was a mix of both and this was mostly before so it's interesting seeing the the gradient here. My light pollution dome is uh, southeast mostly. All right, so anyway, gradient correction tool. 
I did that. And let's see. I should have used Blur Exterminator at some point. Yeah. Let's go back. Oops. All right. Unlinked auto stretch. Uh, okay. So this is after doing the uh, gradient correction. I just made another copy. And next should be. Blur Exterminator. I don't know why it's getting uh, squirrely with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, STF tool on this playback. Uh, but what you're seeing here, this preview is for the uh, color correction. So I use the uh, script to do the image analysis, image solver, and then after doing that, I went to color calibration spectrophotometric photometric cal color calibration and this was just the background reference all right so here you can see the uh, results of the color calibration we go from this kind of whitish green to uh, a blue there's Blur Exterminator, so Blur Exterminator doing a great job. Maybe I got a little too aggressive on the stars. Uh, but, here, let's reset this. Basically what I want to do is darken this a little bit. Because with the auto stretch, it kind of makes it bright, so you can't see. But yeah, so here we can see what Blur Exterminator did. Blur Exterminator is really good for galaxies. So n now we're seeing dust lanes in here a lot better. We're seeing stars show up a lot better. I collected a little bit of HA data with the L Ultimate filter, but it was during uh, poor condition nights and it wasn't a lot. And so I did decide to just uh, proceed without adding any HA. All right, so this is after Blur Exterminator. Uh, let's see, and then we took the stars out. I think I also did uh, noise reduction. Yeah, all right, see, so now I use uh, Noise Exterminator to apply an initial round of noise reduction before stretching. Okay, then we pulled the stars out, and then this is the stretch. So this is what it looks like after the first stretch, the initial stretch, and for stretching I used the generalized hyperbolic stretch. So I feel like I've gotten pretty comfortable with this tool now and I'm using it all the time now. Alrighty, so I got to that point and made another clone and really it was just a little bit of curves work, dark in the background uh, and then start working with some saturation. You can see a mask that I have here and this is basically so I can work on the background without uh, impacting the galaxy itself. Uh, I'm, I use the, um, what you're seeing is there's not a lot of color here. See, now there's some color. It's, I don't know how well this shows up in uh, YouTube, but there's some blotchiness, right? Remember I talked about, or I mentioned that we got kind of this modeled, modeled look of the color. I seem to notice this more often with my one-shot color than I do with my, um, with my monochrome. Uh, so what I was trying to do here was deal with that. Uh, because the background is kept pretty dark from the stretch, it's not too bad, but I know it's there. I can still see it. And so w with this mask applied, um, here's the mask, I think. 
I might have actually been using this one. Yeah, see? I wanted to protect all the little galaxies back there and the and the uh, main galaxy. And I wanted to dial back on the saturation with curves to kind of eliminate some of this blotchy colorness. I mean, the blotchiness is still there, but with it desaturated, it's not, not as noticeable. Uh, then it's a matter of yeah, inverting the mask and increasing saturation to get some color in there. And I mean, right now, it's just really small tweaks uh, with curves to get the color in there. And I think this came out pretty good. I may have over pushed it, I think, a little bit. Uh, the colors look pretty good on these other galaxies. So here's the initial starless image. And I did a little bit of work on the stars. I mean, not, not a whole lot. All right, this is what the stars look like starting out. So uh, if I remember correctly, I probably gave it a little arc sign stretch initially and then used regular histogram uh, to get it out. And uh, use the SCNR tool to get rid of any of the uh, green and purple that pops up. Even though these are broadband stars, because I'm not stretching them all the way to keep them small, uh, the colors are not stretched far enough and you sometimes get green and purple looking stars. Uh, so anyway, with that we get this. And so this is the first version of this target. I believe this is the picture that I shared on the YouTube community tab. So I got to this point and then I took a short break. And so after sitting at this stage for about 24 hours or so, I came back and I tweaked the image a whole bunch of times. Um, uh, I did things uh, tweaking the color a little bit more, playing around with the background as far as how dark I wanted the background to be. Um, I think I probably gave it another treatment of uh, noise reduction with noise exterminator and I probably played with um, unsharp mask too. And so Rather than go through each for each of these different steps, uh, this is what we ended up with. So we got version two, version three, and version four, and slight differences between all of them. Uh, let's see if we look at the galaxies. Can we really even tell? <laughs> uh, I think I just tweaked the sharpness and the curves. I pulled back a little bit on these. And then it was a matter of messing with the background. To be honest, now that I'm looking at these, I think I may be a little bit too dark on all of them. Also notice that like here, by increasing the saturation overall after adding the stars, I introduced some of that color in the background. And at one point, I removed the stars again and pulled back on saturation again. That kind of helped. I think that's what this one here is. So anyway, there it is, the uh, sliced onion galaxy. Like I said, you don't see it too often, and uh, it's a little surprising. I guess it's just kind of hidden away by itself. And during galaxy season up here in the northern hemisphere, there are so many other galaxy uh, uh, targets to point at. And so I think most folks are just unaware of this one. All right, let me know what you guys think of the processing. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, maybe what versions you have, any constructive criticism on this t uh, target. Um, yeah, drop them all in there. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and um, clear skies.